Jason, tell us about Fran Bowles and Deere. Okay, well, you. Jason, I'm, I'm not Liam Fraser. Uh, the reason I'm here is that Liam's mum and dad didn't ask me to go on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what I'm going to do, just before I start, I don't know if, um, if the camera can see the television screen, but that's going to be more interesting than me if anybody wants to tilt that round. And can I just ask a favour, if you've got internet access, do you mind sticking the front doors of your website, jump on your laptop and then you can tell people about it. Okay, so I've basically got two Raspberry Pis over in the corner, uh, and I've got basically what amounts to Liam's trip bag, which is what he brought with him to Edgy Geek uh, last time we did these demos. So I'm very quickly just going to run through a couple of demos, uh, whiz through, if anybody's got any questions we'll go into more detail afterwards. So I'm going to start with the first one. <clears throat> okay. So at the minute we're running the um, Raspberry Pi, running the Raspberry Pi off the laptop. Has he displayed on this? Yeah. Um, so as I said, it's very low power. We're running. We're actually running off a USB port on a laptop. Oh, right. So this is it booting up. Uh, if anybody's used the default Debian image, what you'll what you'll uh, find from the instructions is that you log in as user Pi with a password of Raspberry, which I'll show you now. kids get interested in things because they can play games as well as do other interesting things, is that the graphics performance is particularly good. <coughs> so this is uh, 23, uh, it's basically loaded onto the maps and whatever else, but you'll see that for a £25 device or a $35, whichever way you want to look at it, um, the graphics performance is absolutely amazing. The, the, the history of the chip is that it's actually a graphics processor for a mobile phone. So normally you have a processor in the phone and a graphics processor on the side, but the graphics processor is powerful enough you can use it on its own. So that, you know, the history of it is because Evan works for all from, um, he's got access to these kind of chips. So as I said, this is actually a graphics chip, not really a computer. But I think you'll agree that's probably better than most people were playing Quake when they had a, you know, a big, huge green PC under the desk. So that's the demo that everybody asked for. Um, the graphics hasn't actually been accelerated yet, so it's going to run even faster than that. And if anybody's ever been to an event that from and Beer have done, we normally hook a couple of these up and have a death match with two or three people. Um, and it's one of those blasts from the past where everybody says, oh, I can't play this, I'm no good. You get people strapping around corners doing backflips. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we'll just quit that one. I'm going to start. Oops. So, Liam, if people want to run Quake on their Raspberry Pi, do they need a special image on their SD card? Um, yes and no. You can use a special image to do it, but actually, people have pre compiled this. So, you, if, if you know what you're doing, you could compile it yourself. You could get an image, or you could just download a card that has Quake on it. Um, as I said, this is one of Liam's trip bag, uh, but presumably, what we'll start doing is putting these images on the Raspberry Pi download server because Liam also maintains that and they'll just be available for people to use. So this is the graphical desktop that you get out of the box. One of the things that people ask about streaming films, you know, could I stream um, Star Wars on it? So we had an example before where we were showing uh, VNC being used to do a remote display. I'll now show you the HD encoding or decoding that the box can do. So this is a full HD movie that's been um, hardware accelerated again on a, you know, a device that's uh, you know, certainly not the most expensive in Europe. So it's only a short clip. But it just shows that the graphics performance is, is more than enough for doing uh, AV or you know, Xbox Media Center, those kind of things. So I'm probably going to break off there because I'm conscious we only have a, a little bit of time. And then I'm going to talk about something which I'm uh, particularly involved with, which is during my day job, I work in things like Terminal Services, Citrix, VMware, Remote Access. So VDI has been one of the things that I'm particularly interested in. And my thoughts on this was that if you're going to have 30 Raspberry Pis in a classroom, uh, for doing this kind of programming, and then in the next classroom you're going to have 30 or 40 Windows PCs. If this is powerful enough to, to do graphics encoding, it's got networking, 
Why not actually have a, a, an operating system you can stick on a Raspberry Pi that turns it into a thin client or that turns it into a Windows machine? So we're currently developing a VDI or a thin client operating system for the Raspberry Pi. It's still early days at the minute, but what we're hoping is we're going to make it a dual boot with some of the other operating system vendors. So you say, what do you want to do? Word, Excel, PowerPoint, or do you want to do Python or Coding or Linux? So the idea is that when it's a little bit more mature, um, you don't have to go and buy another 30 or 40 PCs for the classrooms, and effectively your 25 quid Raspberry Pi is also another Windows PC if you have a class that needs it. So I'm just going to, in fact, I'm going to do it under as well. I'm just going to turn this off. Is there something particular on Rambo's and Beer? Um, yes, I'll, I'll come to that shortly. Um, actually, while this is, if you could just go to the home page. Um, That's there. Uh, just go home at the top. Right, yeah. Uh, what there is at the top, obviously this is about me, but if you scroll down a little bit, people are saying, what can I do with my Raspberry Pi? So there's a tutorial there. Uh, Mark Trance is a guy that's done some tutorials for it. I thought he was a guy that had never programmed before. What he actually said is, I haven't programmed for 30 years before. So he's taken Liam's Raspberry Pi shooter uh, program, and he's changed the graphics, done a little bit of Python, and turned it into a Space Invader. So on the website, there's the code you can download there for the game, a PDF tutorial how to do it, so what people have been doing is changing the, the raspberries for something else. So my daughter's got a picture of me, and she squirts me with some of ketchup instead of a, a bullet. <laughs> and the idea is that you get, you know, it's, it's as simple as changing the image to turn into a new problem, or change the background and it's something else. So we've started to do this kind of things. Uh, but again, if you scroll down, there's a lot of data sheets, which are very simple, two-page data sheets on how do you extract an operating system to a card once you've downloaded it? How do you connect things together? So basically, these are almost like the dummies guide, as it were, as in, I just want to know this bit. I'm not an expert, so I don't expect to be. So this is the kind of stuff that we'll be talking again with the Raspberry Filling guys again, because we're, if everybody's doing the same kind of thing, we may as well stick it in one big bundle of common thing. You go down a little bit, oh yeah, there's things like the Raspberry Slice and pile the other add-on boards. A little bit further down, there's a marketing pad with two little characters. There you go. Uh, there are two characters we developed called Pete and Paul. The idea is that we're going to start using those in primary schools. So again, we'll talk to the Raspberry Filling guys, and if everybody's doing all the same stuff, we'll just chuck it in one big pot. Okay. Would you go and ask me a question then? No? Sorry, I lost my question. Uh, so I guess what I'm saying is if you just like, you don't know how to connect it or what to do with it, or you're looking for a first project, this is just one of the places that you can go to, and more stuff will appear on here. Uh, what would be great is if anybody does go, what would be even better is if anybody does think they've got an idea for an article or a guide or a tutorial is that you send it to us at articles and we'll turn it into this. And so that marketing bundle is a, a big download with all the data sheets, all the marketing flyers and all and so I'm not going to it now, I'll just I'll carry on with, with uh, this one, but I just not to shed into access and thought I might answer a couple of questions. So this is my Raspberry Pi which seems to be running Windows, so I better reboot that and show you what it did. So this is the uh, VDI operating system that we've been working on. The idea is that there'll be a very simple one that you can stick on a, on a Raspberry Pi at school and it will just automatically connect to a server. I'm going to stop you for a second. Did you explain VDI? Sorry, Virtual Desktop Infrastructure. It's a very uh, convoluted way of saying turning a device into a Windows PC or turning it into a device that can connect to a Windows PC or a, a big server that can uh, create lots of desktops. So a, a common use for this would be you'd have a big powerful server uh, that could run 30 or 40 Raspberry Pi desktops instead of having 30 or 40 actual PCs like the, the stuff you were talking about. Um, so what we've got here is a Raspberry Pi that's booted up, connected to actually this laptop. Um, so it is a laptop just for the purpose of an example, but if that was a server, that could be 30, 60, 90, could be hundreds of users. Um, so as I said, the idea is that we'll, we'll do a very quick and easy way for schools to do it. We have been asked what would happen if I had a couple of hundred users or a couple of thousand users and would this be another thing that I had to manage on top of the existing one? Well, the good news is we've been talking to a, a UK-based thing client manufacturer and what they've said is they'll allow us to use some of their management software with something that we'll write and what they're talking about is uh, basically saying that you know, with one of these kind of devices you could run 200, 300 uh, thing client devices or you know, bigger on there. So it's not something you absolutely need, but what they've said is if people already have thin clients or devices, they'll allow us to plug into that so there's one way of managing every desktop in your organisation. For some people, you might not need 200 of them, and you might not need central management, so you just download the image and off you go. So again, the most important part about it is it's completely free, completely open source, and you know, we'll just make it available in a simple way that people can understand. Um, I think that's probably about it for me. Unless there's any questions uh, about any of the stuff you said, and then just a very 
quick one. I'll just tell you about Jan, who you're talking to. Any questions on anything you've seen? What size is the image? Um, at the minute, it's just less than two gig, but what we've started with is the default image and trimmed it down. What we will be doing, for anybody who understands this kind of thing, is doing Linux from scratch. So we actually only build the bits we need and we do it from, from nothing upwards. So my industry is writing these kind of operating systems. Have you, which, have you looked at Spindle yet? No, I haven't seen that yet. Right. No. So the scripts that built the Debian Wheezy image. Right. That's okay, so we may have got to about that then. But in, in the past when I've done this before, you can get an image down to about 20 or 30 meg. In fact, most cases it's easier to boot off the network than install it. But yeah, what we've started with is the base build, but as it matures, we'll be you know, kind of writing it from scratch in the future. Any other questions about anything you've seen? Can you say you can have like a hundred windows in clients yeah. effectively? What software would you do when it on server? Um, terminal services or remote desktop services, right. which is part of Windows Server 2003 2008. Uh, Citrix, uh, Zen App and Zen Desktop, or VMware View. So basically, you do pay for a bigger server, you know, maybe a couple of thousand pounds per server, but you can run hundreds of desktops off it. So, right. so I mean, I, I don't want to detract away from what the Raspberry Pi is doing, but um, with all the Linux stuff, because I'm a, a Linux bigot as much as the rest of us. But the reality is that lots of schools still have a lot of Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, and it's not going to change overnight. So if, if schools can spend the budget on teachers and teaching, not equipment and licenses, it would you know, appear to be a, a win all round for everyone. Uh, very quickly, just because we're running out of time, I think. Uh, just to tell you about Jan, who sat at the front, if you just want to tell us a little bit about Jan and what you do and what you're planning on doing. Yeah, sure. Hi, um, I'm involved with these guys out. I don't know how they have quite. Um, I'm the one, I don't understand coding, but I'm the one with the retro phone. Um, the skill set I'm bringing is I consult with schools on uh, change management and ICT strategy, that kind of thing. We've got a room full of like fabulous revolutionary technology. And I'm an old doctor for the, uh, the original homebrew and I live in California and all that stuff. So I know how this stuff can kick off. What I want to do is be one of the communicators. So I'd like to speak to people who need communication strategies with schools, senior, if you need to speak to senior management, governors, principals, that kind of thing. Um, I'm also going to start blogging uh, with Front Rose and Beauty, but the focus will be on for me to primary school age kids. I want them to learn this young and start young it's a language. So by the time they get to the heavier curriculum stuff in high school, they will be well used to it, well up for it. So I'm looking to really apply all this magic in a practical sense with young children in school quickly. So that's matching up curriculum, application, holding teachers' hands, um, doing that bridging thing between your knowledge and overworked teachers who just go, I'm not touching it, and, and, and making that happen. Okay, so any level of communication is what I'm into. So there are people here tonight I really want to speak to, and I've got a whole bunch <coughs> of laptops I can get to, you know, can't wait for the over them. Um, and the other thing, and I'm going to confess this now uh, as I'm sitting here, it occurred to me actually to educate for even more now. I, I'm also involved in documentary production. I'm wondering if there's a documentary in this. I, I'm just looking at your faces to see what your reaction is like. All right, nobody scream. <laughs> <laughs> I may actually start start looking to see if we can do a kind of and capture this event and this moment of time. I think it's valuable. Totally honour you. Thank you. Come and talk to me. I'll talk to anybody. Thank you. Uh, so that's it for us. One thing I probably should have mentioned because we didn't point it out to energy is for all volunteers, everything's free. I mean, people were asking us afterwards, you know, how much is this, how much is that? I was saying, don't be ridiculous, this is, you know, Raspberry Pi, no, nobody charges for anything. <coughs> anyway, if you're interested in any of this, or but more importantly, if you're interested in contributing help with this, come and, come and speak to us later, and I, I think that's me well over my time, so I'll disappear. Thank you very much, Steve. <laughs>